Okay, Denise, you there? I'm here. Hey, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. How are you? Ah, oh, hanging in. We're, we're day by day, right? Power of positivity, baby. You got to stay positive in hard times. So that's okay. right. I know. And, and I know that, you know, you and I are in, in a couple of groups together and different networking events. And a lot of that has either come to a stop or some of these, you know, we, we meet virtually now, but it's not the same, is it? It's not the same. No. You know, it's, um, we all have to be guarded in these times and cautious. Uh, and I love that technology has allowed us these zoom calls and I could see your beautiful face. But at the end of the day, it's, it's not the same, especially like you and I are people, 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 you know, and if you're a people person, it's important to have that interaction and build those bridges and those relationships and networking, you know, you like it or you don't like it. That's how it gets done. So, uh, yeah, I miss it. I miss all my peeps. <laughs> we'll be that much more enthusiastic. I just, you know, I'm, I'm talking to a bunch of, uh, friends and colleagues and uh, just people that I, I know and like I see normally on a daily basis because so many of us are not essential businesses and we've been shut down and and I know that's the position that you're finding yourself in too and it's really it's it's uncomfortable it's on charter territory and we're all getting creative now right and kind of figure out okay now if we can't do business now what does that mean for hopefully May 1st, if we stick to that date, how do, how, are, how do we prepare over these next four weeks and not be so discontent in ourselves right. and, you know, just sit back and just wait for the days to keep passing by. We got to, we got to stay active. I, I was joking around with somebody before I said, I'm more busy now than I was when we were open. <laughs> what's, what's, what's going on here? But it really, it's, it's all preparation and it's yeah. putting in that work. It's staying relevant. It's, you know, staying with social media and connected, not just to your customers, but to your friends, your relatives, and, yeah. and just everyone to kind of know, let everybody know, hey, you know, we're still here. We haven't gone anywhere. And this is kind of, these are the steps that we're taking to make it even better when, you know, when the time comes and hopefully it's sooner, you know, than later for, for all of us. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So why don't you talk a little bit about, you know, your business and, you know, what you all do and kind of how, how you're navigating these kind of mm -hmm. chartered waters right now to stay, one, to stay relevant while you're closed, which is not an easy task. And then, you know, how are you kind of preparing for, you know, for that, that magical day when we get to open? Well, there's a lot around that. Um, so first, from my perspective on a personal um, note, because your personal life obviously flows into your business life. Mm -hmm. um, and my best thing right now for me is to keep my personal life as positive and happy as possible in hard times. Um, everybody needs to keep some normalcy in their life. You know, we can't go here. We can't go there. We can't see each other. We can't actually eat in the restaurant. We can only pick up from the restaurant. Um, so I think every morning, the biggest thing is wake up and wake up and be grateful that we have today. It may not be the today you want. Uh, it may not be where you can walk out and be healthy you know, and, and feel like you're able to interact with people, but the scenery that's out there that God created is amazing. And now are the times open the door, don't sit on the couch and, and plot and think about when May 1st or whenever the day is, uh, yes. arrives, get outside, shake and move. You know, it's a perfect opportunity. We're going to have the cleanest houses. Yes. We should all be fit as you know what, uh, and that's what you need to do. So I think mindset first is get up and get your tail shaken. You got to keep on moving. You know, I, I just want to interject. And it's it's interesting because of all the, I've said, I've already talked to a, a few people and done some of these. And that has been the overwhelming similarity in all of them. All, everybody's like, you know, every, it's so easy to kind of get down, but yeah, you got to take the time to say, okay, look, look at what you can, you're forced to slow down, but now look what you actually recognize and what you're able to enjoy. And like you said, positivity and getting outside, everybody's saying that. And it's actually kind of refreshing to hear that because it could go the other way so easy. It is. You know, one of the hardest thing is, and I have, I have a saying, you know, um, one of the hardest things is getting yourself to listen to your mind. Guys, you're done. Your body will do whatever you tell it to do. Yes. It's your mind. That's the roadblock. 
You know, you can easily talk yourself out of walking out the door and going for a walk versus putting on the TV and watching another Netflix show. Um, your mind is, is the enemy. You have got to tell your mind, stop, I'm not listening to you. I am going to get up. I am going to switch this into power of positivity and I'm going to do what I thought I wanted to do all day and you're not going to stop me. And that's the attitude that I have to have because it is so much easier to just say, no, I'm not going to lift the weight. I'm not going to go for the run. It's easier for me to come up with an excuse. But if you continue to tell yourself, your body will follow. Your body is an amazing thing. It just does what you tell it to do. So I think that's super important for people is when you, when you uh, feel your mind telling you no, you have to tell your mind, oh, oh, oh. when I was a runner, well, I'm still a runner, but I don't do as many long races. Uh, one of my good friends who ran with me all the time, I'm not a hill runner and they're very hard and hard on the body and worse on the mind. And she was a hill runner. And every time we would get to a hill, she would motivate me because I'd start slowing down and she would just out loud start yelling, you got nothing on us, Hill. We're going to run up one side of you, Hill, and down the other. We're coming for you, Hill. You got this. You got this, girl. And if she didn't do that on every hill, my butt would have been at the bottom walking up that hill and I never would have finished that race. Oh, and you have to do that, you, you know, to your mind. You got nothing on me, mind this body's going out there and I'm going to go do what I want to do today. You know, obviously being safe and precautious with our current times, but that's the biggest thing, your mind, you know, so your body will follow, just get your body moving. That's right. That's right. So how are you staying moving with your, your businesses? Yeah. So, um, we decided, so the hatchet factory first is my business. Uh, we're located at 125 wall street, as you know, in 44. Mm -hmm. Um, and we made a, decision prior to it being mandated to close a non-essential business to be a good citizen. So we closed about a week prior. Um, that said, we are a brand new business. It was a very difficult situation um, and decision for us to make because we're new. We were just starting to get the ball rolling. Uh, we just invested in new marketing. We invested in new advertising. And uh, we were selling out on Fridays and selling out on Saturdays. And then, bam, you know, the hatchet, no pun intended, comes down. And here we are. Um, so we are a brand new business. We don't have the following. We don't have, you know, the repeat customers like many of these other businesses may have established for many years. So I think we're in a little bit of a different spot because we're so new. And you can understand that because 11th Element, Amen. same thing. Same boat. So the first thing we did was take a proactive and we went in and ripped the place apart. I literally ripped it apart. Uh, we rebuilt the wall. We rebuilt all the targets. It's um, awesome. Yep. We became uh, members of Waddle, which is W-A-T-L World Axe Throwing League. So when you turn on ESPN, and you see people throwing hatchets. Yes, guys, it's a real sport. And yes, it's a league that's worldwide. And your scores, uh, you can be going against people in anywhere in the world, different countries here in the United States. And we are now a part of that. So we joined Wall, which is huge. We are a approved venue, which means we could bring big business to this area by hosting a Waddle event in our venue. So we will be looking forward to doing that um, in the future. Congratulations. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, it was a big deal. We had to change our boards and we had a, a couple of little things. So I said, well, we're not going to change it. We're going to rip it apart, and rebuild it. So that's what we did. So the first thing is we reinvented ourselves a little bit in having the whole wall of, of um, targets redone and then, you know, joining Waddle and making sure that we are an approved venue because we want to bring business to the area. Mm -hmm. We don't want to just do business here. We want to bring business and help grow those neighbors that are next to us. And that's a big thing. The more people I could bring into my venue, it's better for all the people that are next door to us. The town of 44, Kingston, surrounding businesses, restaurants, whatever it is, mm -hmm. you know, we want to bring new business. So I think that will help. Um, so that was our first thing. Our second concern, of course, was the health of our venue. You know, we started getting super busy and having large groups. Um, and I, by nature, am Felix Unger, if anybody remembers who that is, um, yeah, yeah. to the hundredth degree. I'm a clean fanatic. Uh, so we went in and we literally, once the wall was done and we cleaned up from that, we ripped the place apart in other ways. Um, we have sterilized it 
everything has been touched. We have wiped everything down from the fences and the ax handles uh, to the counters and the bars and the stools, the bathrooms, our desk, our iPads, you name it. We literally went from one section of that place to the next and just basically sterilized it because even though I'm confident there was nothing in our venue, that doesn't mean that there couldn't have been. So um, we just wanted to take extra precautions to make sure that when people do come back out, they can feel confident that we have cleaned our facility from top to bottom. That was super important to me, um, not only for the health of my team and my employees and us, but our customers. You know, we have great customers. We have amazing people that have been coming back now. Um, and we want to support them too. We want them to feel comfortable coming in. So those were the two things internally that we did. Um, Outside of that, social media, you know, I've been trying to post, still put pictures up, even though those people had been in our venue in the last several weeks or months. What we do is we take pictures of everyone that comes in. You see that. No, nothing better than getting that bullseye, um, whether it's parties or date night or couples, whatever it is, people love that and people love being on our page. So I, I, all my employees take those pictures, they send them to me. And then I do all the posting. And so what I've been doing is just trying to keep us in front of social media, letting people know, hey, we're not open now, but we built the wall. We joined Waddle. Uh, we sterilized our place. And by the way, look at how much fun everybody has had when they were able to come to our venue. Um, so that's been a big deal, just keeping our posts going as well. Right. And you bring up, I'm sorry to interrupt no, you, but okay. you're saying it, it doesn't have to be just uh, either just couples or or large, it, or it could be all the way, all the way up to a large group, right? So you you provide yeah. the uh, the space for people to kind of do all kinds of celebrations. So um, tell people how how does that work? So say I want to come there and do uh, a birthday party, and I know you're a uh, BYOB, right? Just we beer are insider. Beer right. wine cider only, so I don't allow any hard alcohol or shots or anything like that. White Claws and Trulies, that's all fine, uh -huh. um, but nothing hard alcohol. So uh, the way it works is anybody, literally. We've had one person walk in at a time and say, hey, can I throw? Sure, if I have a lane open, you know, um, from date night and small groups. But the bulk of my business has really been team building. I Most of my business that comes in, it's companies. It's local companies. I've had companies from two hours away drive up with their teams on a bus Super. and basically come in and do just team building, team trust, camaraderie. Uh, I've had people set up and they've taken the, sp the space over and have done their sales meetings um, and have done their monthly or quarterly meetings. And then when they're done, they eat, they drink, they be merry and throw. The whole, the whole venue. They can rent the whole your venue. venue out. They can rent the whole venue. There's a charge for weekday and there's a charge for weekends. Um, fundraisers. We've had a lot of fundraisers, um, birthday parties, bachelor, bachelorette. I just had a baby shower there. They came in. I had little baby clothes hung everywhere. It was adorable. Um, so there, there's not a theme that we don't do. And speaking of themes, uh, one of the things that we just started when, you know, all of this occurred, um, throw. So we're going to do glow and throw night. Yeah, it's very cool. Um, you can go to our Facebook page. Super cool. I tested it on my daughter. Uh, she had her sweet 16, which is another great opportunity for people to bring their teens in. Uh, birthday party, sweet 16s. And I said, all right, kid, you're going to be my test dummy. And she didn't know about the party. So I, I had it all set up. And then I pulled her aside. She's like, this is so cool. I said, I know. It was awesome. So we have black lights. It'll be glow and throw. Um, there's safety precautions, obviously, but the hatchets glow, the boards glow, and we're going to end up doing that probably on Friday nights, maybe once a month or twice a month. It'll be specific days as of right now, um, but we're going to start doing a lot of theme nights, uh, so that's one of them. Um, we're going to do some date nights. We're going to do some girls' nights and just mm -hmm. guys' night. Um, our league night is always on Wednesdays. We're going to do that every season uh, with the terms of Waddle, the World X Throwing League. So we'll now follow their league. So if we've got to sign up for a league. How do, how do they do that? Right on our Facebook or right on our website. So they oh, can okay. just go to it's thehatchetfactory.com. Mm -hmm. um, you can hit book now and then it gives you the option for axe throwing or leagues or whatever. And if somebody, if it's, if it's say just me and I don't have anybody else that wants to come, can I still join the league on other, or do I have a group? 
You don't have to have a group. We have had our first league launch was mostly into individual people. Oh, okay. They're scored individually. So you can bring a group of friends if you want to get out on a Wednesday night and have fun, but you don't have to. You come by yourself and you'll meet. They, they became so close our first league night. They're all friends now. And they have a chat group. They all chat together. We had a pizza night for them. The trophy was awesome. Uh, a good friend of mine, and you know Bob Moss, who owns yes. a uh, woodworking shop. He whittled up in an hour, which I don't even know how that's possible, um, this plaque that had a solid wood axe attached to it. I mean, super cool. So the guy yeah. that won that was, was super happy. Um, so it's little things like that, you know, but the social media, when we reopen the theme night, we are going to, I'm working on a graphic today mm -hmm. uh, with the Wilkes-Barre Chamber, and they're going to put it up. Uh, we're going to be offering a discount uh, to businesses when, when we are able to reopen. I'm sure people are going to be looking forward to getting out and doing something fun, whether that's outside or inside. Uh, and we hope that they'll come see us at the factory. And we're going to put a graphic up and offer some discounts for groups to come in, businesses to come in uh, with their teams and have at it. You know, somebody's got to get those new boards I put up all broken in. So yeah, it'll be that's fun. Yes. Very yeah. good. Very Bye. good. Awesome. And then, um, so that's the Hatchet Factory. I have, um, and I'll just speak quickly, I have, which I think is super important, especially right now. Um, so another business is Organic Made. And uh, what we do is we clean uh, residential and uh, offices with non-toxic products. Mm -hmm. So people hear that, and in these times, like, oh, it's non-toxic, I don't want it. Well, we can debate that, but the world is green. We want to keep it green. And there's products that we use that are uh, natural and, you know, kill germs just like something that has, you know, all of the other chemicals in it. And it's been proven. And I'm happy to speak to anybody on the, I'm very educated on it. But in these times, that's one of the things that I think is super important. People need to understand um, how this is all being passed and what needs to be cleaned. You don't think of your door handles. Um, you don't think of the things, you know, your cabinets in the home, you got to touch those and wipe all the hardware off, you know, the knobs on your stove, you know, the, in the kitchen, in the bathrooms, you know, the handles. So we are, um, we're, I have a group of people that basically our mindset and mission is to go through offices and homes and literally everything is touched. It's not a quick cleaning. Um, this is you know, can be a one-time deep clean. It can be on a frequency. Um, it can be decluttering. We don't do hoarding if anyone's that, but um, there's a lot of people like now we have all this time, so everybody's doing their closets, uh, but maybe not. So we can come in and help people do that too. But I think um, in these times and going forward, people should be more mindful uh, about how much time they're spending on their own space. And if they don't have that time, my service is the service that could help for them. Um, and you can go to our Facebook page there too, which is Organic Made. Um, and so it, it's M-A-I-D. M-A-I-D, yes, yes, yes. And How we many? make product, we make products to clean in the home that are non-toxic. Um, and there's a lot of proof that some of the essential oils that we use in there um, can help people with whatever it is, sleeping, maybe they're not sleeping, anxiety, so on and so forth. So, you know, if somebody wants to have some products made specific for their, uh, to support their systems, we can do that too. Okay. And I know there's always a concern of people coming in the home that, you know, I don't know who this person is and they're going to be rooting through all of my things. So what, what is your process to vet your, your employees that work on your, in your organic made business? So I am, uh, you know me personally, so I'm a cleaning fanatic to begin with. Um, first, background checks are done. Everybody has to have a background check. They have to pass the background check. Um, I am insured, so we do have our um, insurance and vetting done or, um, for, um, not vetting, um, in our insurance. I can't think of the word I'm thinking of, but so basically. Um, Liability. Not, not the liability. If somebody came in and somebody um, broke or stole something from a home, you know, we're covered for that stuff. I, I just have a mental block right now. But anyway, it'll come to me. Um, but nobody, and this is huge because there's not another company that does this. And I'm going to tell you there's not because I know. Um, anybody that works for me, they work with me first, meaning I'm on the job and they're working and being shown by me what needs to be done. 
and I'm looking at their work and checking through it. And then when they're finally able to be on their own, which is with my authority saying they're approved and now they can because they're cleaning to the level that I want them to clean, while they're out there cleaning, they never know when I'm showing up and I do checks. So they could be working at a place that they've been working for for several weeks and out of the blue, I'll pull in and just go in and check on them and make sure and I'll check the home, I'll check the office to make sure that whatever it is they're working on, it is done and it passes my test. Oh, that's so, comforting. Yes. As, an, as the owner, um, you know, it's my character. Uh, and you know, some people don't like to clean. Some people love to clean. Um, and you know, it's, it's about the people that love to clean and want to do it right. Um, there's it's therapy. Uh, our tagline at the hatchet factory is better than therapy. And I also <laughs> cleaning very therapeutic. Um, so we're looking, you know, to always help people of any, you know, the home doesn't matter the size, the, the office doesn't matter the size. Um, but someone that really wants someone that's going to do the job correctly. Anybody can say it, but trust me, um, all I could say is if you know my personality, everything's getting checked a bunch of times. And uh, those surprise checkups are always fun. I love that. It. And it's interesting you said, so you do residential and commercial yes. and, uh, uh, accounts. What is the um, rating? How far out will you go? Let, let's just say from... Um, I don't know. What, what do you consider your home base? Would you consider it? Like I mean, Lucerne and Lackawanna County, but I have to tell you, um, you know, I have a client in Nescapec, mm -hmm. you know, which is a good almost 50 minutes away, a little over an hour away, depending on the traffic there. Um, you know, so I've been out in Berwick and Bloomsburg and the Nescapec area. Um, the bulk of my business is Kingston, Wilkes-Barre, um, mm -hmm. Scranton, Dallas, Shavertown. Um, but, you know, within an hour to an hour and a half, we've driven, uh, depending okay. on the job. Yeah. All right. That's good enough. Pretty, it's a pretty wide radius. Right. And it, yeah, it's, it's real important, though, because like you said, there might be companies out there that mm -hmm. don't do the thorough, you know, background checks like you do. And then they don't use natural ingredients. They're using a bunch of chemicals. And people don't realize sometimes that could harm you more than it is the help helping you that you think it is anybody can put in a google search and ask about cleaning products um you know based on the chemicals that are in there the petroleums um you know it is just it's just not healthy i've been non-toxic for about four and a half years um i am a huge essential oil user uh and honestly i haven't had a sniffle in four and a half years i mean i basically oil every day so you know there's a whole green movement. There's people that understand it. There's people that love bleach. That's not my customer. Yes. That's not what we do. You know, right. that is not my customer. Um, but, you know, if anybody wants education on it, they want to sit and talk about it, understand the differences. Uh, the biggest thing that I see out there is on a business side, any businesses that we do, um, cleaning people come in and they just do a very quick job. They get in, they get out, and it's not really done at the level it should be. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, residents, same thing. Any, anybody that's hired me on both ends, um, when we're done, they're like, wow, you know, we haven't seen that cleaning ever. So yeah. You have availability now if someone's interested. We do. Yep, we do. We do. My team is always building. I'm actually taking applications all the time. So we're also expanding and looking for uh, people right now it would be probably part-time work when we reopen. Yes. Um, yes. Uh, but we are taking applications for that too. Let me ask you this. We, you just said uh, an uh, important thing when you open or when people open up again, can you do cleanings now that people are, say the businesses are closed, you can probably go in there now and, and do work, right? Or no? Are you we can. Yeah. Okay. So we can um, because it's um, approved for us to do that based on what's happening. Um, and I do actually have a couple offices that are the type of businesses. They are essential that are still open. Um, so we are still supporting those businesses and doing what we can uh, for them okay. being that they're an essential business. But even if they're closed and they want us to come in and do something, we are able to do that um, to okay. get them prepared and ready for when they can reopen. So Good that's to know. awesome. Yeah. So yeah. I'm getting my red battery mark. So we have a little bit of time left. My, my yeah. bad. But we have some, one more thing to cover. And I know that's something that's near and dear to your heart. And, and we're trying to support you as well. Uh, at the spa. So why don't you talk about Sleep in Heavenly Peace? Great. Uh, thanks, Donna, for that. So 
Uh, sleep in heavenly peace. I'll keep it pretty quick because it's pretty easy to understand once you hear about it. Um, sleep in heavenly peace is an organization that we build beds for children that just don't have a bed, which people look at me like I have six heads when I say that. But the reality of it is there are hundreds, if not thousands of children uh, that don't have a bed. They're sleeping on the floor. They're sleeping on piles of blankets, mm. on couches, in chairs. Um, we've seen people where there's four to six kids sharing one bed. Um, we've seen it where kids of ages, they shouldn't be still sleeping with a parent. Uh, so we are in Luzerne County. I brought the nonprofit here about a year and a half ago, mm -hmm. a year and a half ago. It is near and dear to my heart. Um, you know, it's not about me. It's about helping the others. But in order for anyone to understand why I was called to this, uh, you should know I come from literally zero. Um, we lived in the projects in South Boston. And yes, I used to pack my car and have a gad. <laughs> Uh, thank goodness that accent's no longer with me, but, um, I come from nothing and I shared a bunk bed with three sisters. And when my mom said it was time to go to bed, if you didn't get that real estate and your butt wasn't in that bed, you didn't have a spot. Um, you know, I've never, I, I, I hadn't had new clothing until I got my first job at 16 and bought it myself. It was always hand-me-downs. Mm -hmm. It doesn't define you. And these children in Luzerne County, it doesn't define them. Every child, of course, needs clothing, of course, needs food. They also need eight hours of sleep. We mm -hmm. have school systems that are expecting these kids to get up and perform, do the math, do the algebra, do the history, do the English, do the science. How can they possibly concentrate if they are sleeping on a floor? So we build beds. They're brand new. We supply a brand new mattress and brand new bedding. The way that it works is you log on to our Facebook page or onto the national site, which is Sleep in Heavenly Peace, okay? And it's shpbedswithanass.org. That's the national site. You click request a bed. You fill out the application. You find the zip code for where you are. It comes into my team. We vet that application. And based on the criteria, you know, there's certain questions. Do you have a bed? Is it broken? You know, or are you sleeping on the floor? This is for people that don't have a bed. This is not for broken beds or you want to upgrade to a bunk because you're tired of your single. We build single beds, we build bunks, but it's for children that don't have it. And I will tell you, sadly, um, this shutdown has affected us. We are obviously shut down. We cannot go into people's homes at this point. It's not. Even though it is essential, it's not an essential business. We're a nonprofit. Um, so basically what we're going to do is hopefully have a bunch of build days. We've had some scheduled for April and May. They may get pushed out. Anyone can volunteer and help us. Um, but we are now in a deficit of over 200 beds. So right here in Luzerne County, over 200 requests for children in your neighborhood, in your backyard are sleeping on the floor. And even more so now because everybody's stuck at home now. So it's probably making it even a little bit more tense. Yeah, more tense. Um, super sad. You can go to our Facebook page. It's Sleep in Heavenly Peace, Luzerne County. And you can see some of the videos of the deliveries we've done. Um, mm -hmm. Hard for me not to get choked up and tear up every time I, I go into a home. Um, but the way people can help, first of all, awareness. Know that we're out there. We are currently um, part of the 501 uh see free uh, through the Westmoreland Club. It is um, an opportunity for us to have people vote for us. Mm -hmm. The vote costs $5 and 15 cents. Um, the winner of this uh, event ends up getting uh, $10,000 in cash plus a $5,000 uh, credit at the Westmoreland Club to hold, uh, you know, a fundraiser. fundraiser. And when does this end? Um, so the first round goes through April. I think it ends uh, mid to end May. I don't know the exact date, but round one is in April. And then I think it goes into May for round two. Only the top 15 uh, that make it through uh, the first round will move on to the final. Okay. So super important for people to vote for us. Uh, there are many nonprofits in this and they're all equally important. The difference though, guys, is a lot of those nonprofits have been around forever. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of those nonprofits have tons of exposure and tons of support coming in where we're new. Um, our mission is as important as the next. And we don't have that bank account and we don't have the beds built for these kids that are sleeping on the floor. Right. And 
And what you said is so important and it really aligns with us here at 11th Element because we like to highlight the smaller local nonprofits because they need exactly that. They need exposure, they need yep. volunteers, and they need funds yes. that, that most of, the, of these bigger ones already, already have. So I appreciate you uh, bringing that up and the work that you do for them. And, and uh, we were uh, highlighting you when the shutdown happened and yeah. We intend on enacting that special when we're able to be open again. And then, uh, you know, it, it helps out our customers because they get a little bit of a discount, but it also encourages them, one, to kind of learn about you, and then two, to donate one of the many much needed items you have. So go run down real quick the, the items that you accept sure. as, a, um, uh, as a donation and, and explain the reason for the uh some of the steel wool and the vinegar because i thought that was really important <laughs> it is important okay so anyone can help us first of all volunteer when we're up and running come to one of our events and join a build a day b-u-i-l-d it's where we build beds so people can come in join us build volunteer trust me if i can build a bed anybody can build a bed okay yeah. super easy we'll teach you we have qualified people the other way is to donate brand new twin size sheets bedding pillows comforters blankets so anything soft, soft textile, twin size only, but it has to be brand new. We don't take anything used, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, the mattress and the, the bed, we build those. So we do not take donations for used mattresses and we do not take donations for used beds. We make those, that's the point. It's the community coming together, building beds together to change the community. So you um, the mattress as well? We supply the mattress, a brand okay. new mattress. Okay, yeah, okay. We do. Every bed goes in. We put a brand new mattress that we unwrap in the room and then we make it with the sheets and the pillows and the bedding. Yes. yes great. So bedding is huge. Um, gallon jugs of white vinegar. Okay. And I'm going to explain that in a sec. And then you can go to Lowe's, not the dollar store, Lowe's into their paint section and get um, steel wool. So we need packets and packets and packets of steel wool. And the reason is that is how we make our stain for the bed. Mm -hmm. So we make big vats of vinegar. We take the steel wool and it goes into the vinegar, which over um, the course of three to four weeks starts to dissipate. It turns the vinegar a light brown color. And then the vinegar actually, when applied to the wood, it uh, cleans and gets rid of all the wood spores, anything that might be on or in the wood. And if we have toddlers in those beds and they decide to chew on it a little bit, it's non-toxic. Again, all okay. about my non-toxic and natural living and this just supports that too. So vinegar, steel wool, wool pillows, and then blankets, comforters, throws, um, and twin sheets, all brand new. Any of those things people can help with. And of course, monetary donations, you know, any type of monetary donation, of course, um, that helps us buy lumber and mattresses to do our build days and to deliver. Yeah, that's so good. And, and it's amazing to me that you build all of these things and you teach everybody how to build them because at the first, at first glance, I was like, oh my gosh, I've never built anything in my life. There's no way. But like you said, you have people on hand. So if it's a single person, if it's, if it's a group or if it's a company that has a team building, you know, group, they want to get out, they can certainly, this is a great chance for them to, to do that. It is. And I'm glad you said that because the way that our build days work, we are looking for companies to sponsor us. You know, at the end of the year, a lot of companies have a lot of money they want to write off for taxes. Um, it's a super way for you to sponsor a build day. A good build day could be anywhere from 1500 to 3000 to 7000. It depends on how many beds you want us to build, but it's not us building them. So let's use a company. Let's just say 11th element decides to sponsor something in the future and you get permission from your landlord that we can use a portion of the parking lot, we come to you. We set all the tools up, we set up all the tables and all the stations, and then you and your employees and any other volunteers come and build beds. Mm -hmm. So any business, indoor or outdoor, we come to that business and we build the beds on their property and teach their employees. We just did a big one, which you stopped by over at uh, Sign and T-Shirt Kings. Mm -hmm. In 44, we use their garage um super gracious to have that space and we built 60 beds that day tremendous help incredible and then you you have the uh, ability to go ahead and deliver all those once they're built as well and people can go on those and i think it's important too because now they're seeing the whole process and they see the why right? yes the why is huge um you know it changes your life when you deliver a bed and you see the kid the reaction the parents 
I mean, I can tear up every time. It literally changes your life and your perspective. I recently had someone, um, you know, there's always a naysayer say something negative about, you know, our, uh, not just our organization, but in any organization at this point because of what's happening. I get it. Listen, I understand, but like I started in the beginning, we have to keep some normalcy in our lives. Mm -hmm. We can't just let everything during these times be forgotten and expect that they're going to survive. The small businesses cannot be forgotten, okay? The restaurants, we're supporting them with drive throughs That's amazing, and I'll continue to do that. You're closed. I'm closed. Many businesses are closed. We have to remember to support them when they do reopen, and the nonprofits are no different. We do all this work all year to change people's lives, and they have it even worse right now um, than, than most. So mm -hmm. our mission is to continue awareness and to continue our mission and get to that goal that no kid sleeps on the floor in our town. Well, we appreciate what you do. And, and I hope that people watching this reach out to you, uh, Thank you. to help when we could start again. And um, yeah, and it's awesome. And we're, and we're thrilled to be, to be supporting you as well. So you just let us know whatever else you need. Well, you are the best. If anyone hasn't been to see Donna and Chris yeah. over at 11th Element, this, this is my plug. It is the most beautiful spot in the area. You all have to check it out. Um, and it's super therapeutic and super natural. And I'm telling you, walk in, float out. Ah, oh, there you go, my tagline. You're, well, we appreciate you saying that. Thank you so much. And we anticipate a, a big flow when we open just because of the salt rooms and the, the respiratory conditions. So uh, I Good. think we'll be able to help people out. But yeah, but this was great. And I appreciate you taking time. So uh, we'll, everybody will we'll put... Uh, everything in the comments uh, below for the Hatchet Factory, for um, Organic Maid, for Sleep and Having a Peace, and just keep an eye out for uh, Denise because she has her hands in everything. So there's some good stuff coming out. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me, Donna. You guys are awesome. Thanks, Denise. All right. Thank you. Bye.